one of the things you are seeing, and I think you're seeing a lot of people, well, specifically, should we say, um, scientists, shall we say, in America, really realize is that the MAGA movement, and Donald Trump in particular, this whole MAGA movement, is just having an absolutely wrecking ball effect on, on the entire STEM field of America. Like, it is being destroyed. And how really STEM works is it depends on mostly government funding and grant funding. That is how those fields are operating. And right at this very moment, the government has pretty much just gone, yeah, we're not going to fund these. Well, guess what? Grant funding is not enough alone. Yes, that's still, you know, potentially a quite big amount of money. But historically, if you look at uh, the the fields of, of innovation in STEM, most of the big innovations all started with government funded projects. That's how it all started. So if you remove that, which is again, giant pot of money to go, where are these people, where are they going to go? You're going to end up with a lot of unemployed scientists. So of course, they're going to leave. Now, immediately, of course, uh, you have the language barrier. So I can definitely predict you will probably get Canada will will get a lot probably, um, and then any other sort of English speaking country. So probably you know the UK, Ireland, um, Australia, New Zealand instantly right there. But of course, you know there will be other countries that will benefit as well. Uh, but you know language is a factor in in this type of decision making for for these people. So that will factor into it. But they will go to to other countries. They will go to to France. They will go to Germany, where that grant money is. And you will probably see, I think, America's place as like the top STEM country. I think you'll see that slip. I think you will see that slip. Very, very much so, because Donald Trump has made it clear that he has a disdain for science, as has the entire MAGA movement. That will hurt America in the long run. Massively so. Massively so. So there is indeed a brain drain happening from, you know, from Trump's actions, and it is taking place now. Scientists are moving to other countries, and this will hurt America in the long run. But other countries are going to benefit. So... You know, it's always worth thinking about, you know, these consequences because you will see this and you will pro probably ultimately start to see a lot of, you know, American scientists turning up in different countries very, very soon. And I've said this before, we should be taking advantage of this. We should absolutely be taking advantage of this here in the UK. We should be offering the, the golden visa to these American scientists and, you know, trying to attract over as many of them as they can. Uh, it would be an absolute blinder of a development because that will bring so much benefit down the line. You are making an investment into future technology and research happening in this country. That would be a fantastic thing to see our country do. And I wouldn't be too surprised if you see other countries maybe start to go, actually, hang on, there's a, there's a, there's a really good advantage we could pull here on that. So before we do go more into this, please do remember to click the like, share, and subscribe button down below. There are links to my Patreon page, the more station link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can uh, buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button, and of course, as always, there's the Pony Club down below as well. So let's get on into this then. So the great US brain drain, how Trump's contempt for research is now driving scientists abroad. So... In an increasingly competitive world where innovation and knowledge are keys to progress, the United States will soon find itself with a brain drain. France's Ali, uh, Alex Marcel University has now invited US scientists to move to its campus following the Trump's administration's unprecedented cuts to science funding, signaling now a crisis in the country's innovation model of the consequences of putting off in, uh, of putting an ignoramus in office. 
The University of uh, Alex Missile uh, is opening its doors to now US researchers who fear the consequences of the anti-scientific and anti-technology politics imposed by an administration that seems not to understand the value of knowledge. Like I say, huge consequences for this. Huge consequences for this. Meanwhile, rumors and of course statements are now filtering out from the renowned institutions such as NASA, Yale, and Stanford, that a growing number of scientists are now considering moving abroad in response to censorship and budget cuts that are now threatened critical project projects, an opportunity for the European Union or simply a catastrophe for everyone. Well, it is a massive opportunity. Um, this is a massive opportunity for this. We should absolutely be doing this like we should absolutely be doing this we should absolutely be grabbing those people left right and center the idea that you do not go after these people because it is an investment in the future for future technologies that your country will create um and again these sort of technologies have created the unicorn companies the apples the microsofts of the world that is where that technology has come from all starts with that research. But if you want that type of company, then, well, you need these people to carry out that research. So this is something we should absolutely be looking into. So the impact, of course, of these decisions goes very much far beyond the just simple numbers on a balance sheet. They represent a very big step backwards for a country that has become a pioneer in research and technology. And again, this is the consequence. And as I said at the beginning, America, don't be surprised, will lose its place as that pioneer in, in research and technology if this, if this really does go through and happen, if those are more than just rumors. But this is the consequence. And then, can America ever reclaim that? Who knows? The idiot-in-chief has demonstrated his contempt for science with his politics. Uh, the elimination now of strategic posts, along with, of course, the closure of offices at NASA, as well as job cuts in now weather forecasting and, ocean, and the Ocean Agency. The interference in federal databases only now undermines the ability of the United States to now compete globally, but also sends a very dangerous message. Popularism and ignorance are more powerful than scientific rigor and the pursuit of knowledge. And that is a very dangerous message to send, a very dangerous one, because we saw this during the 1930s. There was a big brain drain from Germany. Why? Well, I think that's obvious considering, you know, when it happened. <laughs> this, of course, policy is, of course, scientific self-sabotage. And it is now driving an exodus of talent that instead now of developing the country's innovation ecosystem is now forced to seek refuge in countries where science and technologies are reasonably valued. What future, of course, awaits a nation that limits, uh, of course, that limits and closes its doors to ideas and even discoveries that could even revolutionize entire sectors? The Republic of Gilead. The competitiveness, the innovation, it all depends on freedom to explore, question and create. Where these freedoms, of course, end up the restrictions, there is then a potential costs are incalculable. Defending research and promoting policies that incentivize creativity and progress is now essential for any country. But in the case of the United States, that has now traditionally even led the way in many of the fields of science tech, and technology, the brain drain should be sounding alarms. If this continues down the path, the country could see its global leadership diminished and be regulated in a race now towards the future. Science cannot afford to be a victim of ideology, ignorance, or of some, uh, of, or even some, and even a society should actually speak out and restore respect for science and investment in science. The commitment to innovation is, in short, a commitment to the future of humanity. Um, yeah, I think that's very well said. I think that really sums it up, really, doesn't it? It really, really sums it up. You know, there's going to be consequences for this for America for decades to come. Decades to come. And I'll say this now, right now, for us here in the UK, for Europe, 
Canada there's a lot of chance to grab suddenly a lot of scientists and innovators and inventors from America and really steal a massive march on them because for years Europe has really struggled to get its European Space Agency off the ground well if there's suddenly you know a lot of you know NASA scientists becoming unemployed we'll have that thank you <laughs> why not <laughs> you know why not that's that's literally the case you're looking at literally the case you are looking at now that is going to affect America massively negatively and hey you know, we saw this happen to us with uh, aviation, although the, the situation was widely different. But why not steal all that back? You know, the, ugh, so many negative things are going to come, come from this for America, but it's their own fault. But this is what happens when you put someone like Donald Trump in who just does not respect uh, science, research, or anything like that. And he's driving these people abroad, driving these people abroad. And that represents a massive massive opportunity so as always uh thank you very much for watching and of course as always uh you can click on the like and share button down below the patreon page the buy me coffee link the we can well buy me coffee the youtube thank you button and of course as always we'll see you all next time